for the purposes of our conversation this evening, are roughly the fir first three decades of the English 19th, uh, 20th century. So the period from 1901 after Victoria's death <coughs> to the end of Edward VI's reign, uh, reign in 1910 uh, is come to be called the Edwardian period for obvious reasons. And then George V took over from 1910 to 36, mm -hmm. and that's sometimes referred to as the Georgian period. But things get confusing by talking about the kings. So when I'm talking about this period or the context of Downton Abbey, I mean primarily the 30 years between the turn of the century and 1930. And the idea is that I'll talk a little bit about the things that were actually happening, and you'll have a sense of how they do or don't connect to your experience of the show. And then for the last third of the evening, I'd really like to hear from you or have you hear from each other uh, about why so many of you are here, uh, what you love about the show if you do, why you don't just uh, see it uh, from time to time, but watch it. Uh, it is one of the most watched television shows in the world. You know, you may know that in the UK it's a year ahead of us, a season ahead of us. Uh, and uh, you think I'm kidding, but I know people who have arranged vacations uh, to go there to, to catch it early. So uh, I'm hoping that you can talk best about that. And I do think, once you get my presentation, we want to talk a little bit about what the appeal is of such an un-American show, if you understand what I mean, uh, to Americans in 2012 and 2013. So that's going to be your part in about 40 minutes. So uh, you know that uh, the Titanic figured significantly in the plot of the first year, the very first episode, uh, that the First World War, the Spanish influenza pandemic, um, figured uh, very significantly in the second season. And in the third season, although there's some stuff about um, the Irish question and the Irish troubles, I think it's fair to say that the third season, the family is more insulated from historical events as compared to the first two. Uh, that's a producer, writer, or director's choice, uh, but I don't think Ireland, uh, except in the role of a particular character, figures as much in the drama right now as the other events of the first two seasons. So the end of the 19th century, which in England was effectively delayed until the First World War, was prepared for by the rise of various kinds of pessimism and stoicism at the end of the 19th century. The optimism that marked the Victorian age had kind of run dry by the end of the period. And even though you hear about the gay 90s, or art for art's sake, there's a lot of darkness at the end of the period and uh, many uh, late Victorians thought that the world was actually not going to be better on the other side of 1900. Uh, so this notion of pessimism uh, that we see in the novels and poetry of Thomas Hardy or in uh, the stoicism that we see in Rudyard Kipling's uh, The Jungle Books, the short stories he wrote, the poetry of A.E. Houseman, some of you may know. Uh, this notion of, uh, think of how the expression keep a stiff upper lip is associated, it's actually an American expression, but that is associated so fully with uh, uh, Brits, upper class Brits, and the idea not only of soldiering on, the good soldier, a title of one of the books from the period by Ford Maddox Ford, uh, but the notion that it is not uh, appropriate to reveal emotion. Don't let that lip quiver. Uh, the poem If by Rudyard Kipling, which was published in 1910, is a poem that begins, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Some of you know that poem. And it ends with, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Uh, if you can do all these things, then this. That is, if you have moral character, if you have this sense of centeredness, of stoicism, of not letting the frenzy the chaos of the world disturb you. This is not a poem from a working class father to a working class son. This is about nobility of character, 1910. A significant year, you'll see that many things uh, are referenced to the end of the first uh, Edward of the period reign. It's as if some people in the nation were anticipating the onslaught of calamities of the 20th century that began with the sinking of the HMS Titanic in 1912, the First World War that began just a few years later for England, and the Spanish influenza pandemic 
of 1918, which killed well over 50 million people, an estimated 3 to 5 percent of the world's population at the time. Does anyone know why it's called the Spanish influenza? It came at the end of a war where Spain was neutral, and all the countries involved in the war had censorship of the statistics of fatalities, including from illness. But Spain wasn't involved in the war, so they published their statistics. And people were like, look at all the people dying in Spain. There must be a Spanish influenza. It was all over the world. It's just that the Spanish government was talking about it. There's a little cocktail party information. And all three of those dark...